pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Uh, Madam Clerk, could I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Christine Adamczak. Here. Councilmember Linda Hammer. Here. Councilmember Michael Jasinski. Here. Councilmember Gerald Kaminsky. Here. Councilmember Brian Nowak. Kevin Hart's in here. I believe he will be late. Oh, I thought it was uh, Councilmember Fuller. Oh, okay. and Councilmember Polarski. Okay, though they're running late. They'll be here later. And Supervisor here. Diane Benchkowski. Here. So right now we have five of us. Um, we do have uh, the first item of discussion is the Town Historian Annual Update. Maureen Gleason, um, speak into the microphone. Good evening, Supervisor Benkowski. Good evening, board members, and to the town residents. Good evening. Uh, January 2022 started out on a bad note. We had the unexpected passing of Laura Ely Hacker, a descendant of our town's prominent Ely family settlers. Considerable amount of time was spent planning her memorialization at her funeral and her celebration of life event. As Laura was a charter member and past president of the Chikawaga Historical Association, for decades she had collected items of our town's history in many forms. I was involved with the task of going to her home many times to retrieve all relative historic materials prior to the estate sale. A large amount of items was removed and transferred to the Historical Museum for inventorying and archiving. In April, I attended the Erie County Historical Federation annual meeting. I met with the county's numerous municipal historians and horror historical society members. I enjoyed the day networking with those in attendance, including our county historian, Doug Kohler. In May, I organized the annual cleanup task of town-owned Earth Settlers Bennett Family Cemetery Grounds with Compact and Boy Scout Troop 440. They are from Infinite Prague Roman Catholic Church. The raking produced over 10 trash bags filled with rubbish and debris. In June, I participated in the annual Soldiers Commemoration Ceremony at the Garrison Road Cemetery, also known as the War of 1812 Cemetery. I prepared and presented a speech regarding the history of the burying ground. I then had the honor of dedicating and unveiling a newly erected National Historic site roadside sign. The sign was acquired by me personally completing a grant application and submission to the William C. Pomeroy Foundation for the amount of $1,600. I was pleased that the grant was awarded. I also wish to see the mass grave mounds restored to their previous condition in order to delineate the grave sites for historic and archaeology purposes. In August, we had the Erie County Fair for 10 days, and we did have an exhibit in the Julia Boyer Reinstein Historical Building. The theme this year was transportation, and I was responsible for making a lot of the graphics and pictures that went in our display. September, I attended the American Association for State and Local History annual conference right here in Buffalo, New York at the convention center. I participated at one of the uh, four all-day sessions. In October, I presented a lecture on the history of Chikawaga to the members of the St. Philip the Apostle Roman Catholic Church Women's Club. In October, I conducted a walking tour of prominent Polonians that are in the St. Stanislaus Roman Catholic Cemetery on All Souls Ancestors Day event. I compiled a database of over 180 notable Polish persons and selected several of these grave sites to visit after researching their biographies. In November, I looked at the condition of an 1880 Erie County Atlas held at the Archives and Records Center, and I recommended it to have it restored for treatment and something to perform for it. I met with the staff from Hadley Exhibits to discuss creating an interpretive sign to be placed 
at the Bunn Family Cemetery to replace a missing one. Preliminary design is currently being drawn up. The cemetery is open for public by appointment. You can tour there anytime, just give us a call. Over the past year, numerous public requests for historical information have been received and I had to research and document and provide them information. The Erie County Legacy Project, there were monthly meetings post by Centennial. I uh, attended all those meetings. We are working on a project for the history of aviation in Chictawaga. A roadside sign is being planned to put in front of the Calspan building. Inside the Niagara Airport, Buffalo Niagara Airport, a display is being designed and proposed with the NFTA. So when people come to Buffalo, they'll get to see where it all started in 1926 and give them some history of Chictawaga. Uh, last fall, I met with Chelsea Lomberger, Special Collections Curator at the Anna M. Einstein Library. She showed me how she was reorganizing the Special Collections room that we have there. A whole stack of books was pulled and set aside for review, and I was asked to assist her in finding a suitable repository for these books. In November, I arranged a historical museum and caboose train to be open for tours during the annual Christmas tree lighting festival. And I distributed ornaments to the kids. In December, I met with firefighter Donald Leon Jr. to assist him with gathering newspaper articles about Doyle II Fire Hose Company and preparing for the 100th anniversary celebration. I am currently working with the Chief Ucrest Fire Company in preparing for their anniversary in 2024. I continue to maintain a board trustee position with the Chitawaga Historical Association and attend their monthly meetings and presentations. <coughs> in this new year, I have been involved with the removal of the deteriorating historic cannon at the Garrison Road Cemetery. Joe and Shirley Bumgarner of Bumgarner Furniture have been restoring the wood on the carriage and wheels, and then it will be painted to preserve it. So it's not there in the cemetery right now. The Historical Museum is open to the public every Monday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m and every first Sunday, two to four. The caboose is open as well. I also welcome the residents of our town to visit our year museum and learn about your town's history. The Historical Association offers free public presentations about history on the third Thursday of most months at the Senior Center right over here at 7 p.m. The Historical Museum's critical need for expansion continues and is in need of funding sources to build an addition onto the house. Historic preservation is still a very top priority for me. Preservation of our oldest homes and buildings continues to be a priority for me and look forward to working with the town and our attorney to continue on drafting a final ordinance in our historic preservation law. I have completed and submitted the annual historian's report to Devin Landers, New York State historian, as required by the Department of Ed as an appointed officer of the town. I have been charged with the duty of responsibility for matters relating to our community's past and will, to the best of my ability, continue to take on this task for this coming year. In conclusion, man makes history out of the cloth of his own making. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen, so much. Thank that you. Was beautiful. <laughs> you certainly have been busy, and, and thank you so much for everything you're doing to represent the town and um, getting the word out. I like the idea about the airport. Um, we are located in the town that the airport is. 
and we want to welcome all the visitors from all over. Mm -hmm. So it's great, and thank you for being here. Does anybody else have any questions for Maureen before we run? Well, thanks for being here, Maureen. Appreciate it. We'll move on. Um, we have Go Bike Buffalo giving us an update on our uh, Create Healthy Schools and Communities grant. Dan Young, and I'm not sure who else is here, Dan. Yeah, so, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, so go Buffalo, I actually just got off the phone with them. Um, they are in route right now. I guess there's oh. an accident that got them diverted well, we can, 33. We can go on to the next thing and come back. Yeah, so they're probably like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, okay. all right, all right, good. Uh, Camille Brandon is here. Uh, she wants to give us a little history on this um, energy efficiency and conservation block grant program. Camille, um, you have the floor, and I know uh, Council Member Adams Act uh, asked you to be here today too and have the board discuss. Okay, we, how uh, we wanna, thank you. What we do. Good evening, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, so I had uh, notified the supervisor as I do of any information uh, when grants come in or money that's available through the town. Um, and then we go through the normal procedure of filling out the grant form and then applying for it. So I wanted to make everybody aware of a grant tonight, and let me get it for you. Um, of course, I had my notes up, and now that I'm up here, here we go. It didn't want to come up, but they always do. Um, so anyway, this year, there is the U.S. Government Department of Energy has um, has come up with an energy efficiency and conservation block grant that certain towns and villages are eligible for. So we came across the grant and it's a formula grant, which means there's no match, the money can come to the town. So the town um, will be entitled to receive $143,440. And this money has to be used for energy efficiency uh, items in the town. And some of the, some of the items that it can be used for, um, it can be used for your LED light project if you want to put the money towards it. Doesn't have to be. Um, it can be used for building energy audits, for developing clean energy infrastructure plans. Uh, for clean energy equipment and vehicles. Um, the money is the town's to do whatever it wants. What you have to do uh, is, and we'll ask for the board approval for this, you have to submit a pre-application form. You do not have to decide how you want to do the money for the pre-application form. You just put the form in, and then you can decide, and then you can write an application any time before January 2024, and you will receive your money. There's no match, there's no mandate. So um, it's a pretty simple $144,000 that the town is slated to receive, so you might as well take advantage of it. But you have to apply to take advantage. Any questions? So all we would have to do right now is mm -hmm. send the pre-award information sheet in. Right, that's all that has to be so done we now. We don't have to decide on the project. Yeah, now. well, you know, uh, upon board approval, mm -hmm. we'll get you the form to sign. The, then, um, I can have the form for the resolution, you good. know, for yeah. next week, we'll do the resolution in the form. And then we just file that, and it has to be filed by the 20th of okay. uh, April. Well, if okay. you come across some specific ideas, what other towns, or if you have a list, I can, I can send I can send everybody ideas on what the whole grant said. I read the grant um, mm -hmm. and all the information about it. They offer a lot of good ideas on what you can do for energy efficiency, and I'd be happy to provide everybody a copy of that yeah, if that you'd would like. Probably then help. you can look at it yourself yeah. and see. I know Council Member Adams, Zach, you had some questions or ideas yeah. or wanted to talk about it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> the question, no, you basically answered my question. I wanted mm -hmm. to know what the money could actually be used for. Okay. And I would love to see the outline of the grant. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It, it's your decision. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we're all in agreement to get the letter or the pre award information sheet submitted. You're going right. to get it on um, the resolution. You're going to help us put that. So we'll have the resolution at the next board meeting. Okay. Which gives, uh, which gives grant writers or us enough time to submit the mm -hmm. application. Yeah. And okay. Then, then we have until next year, and we'll try to get that on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but, and then you're going to send us the information sheet with some ideas, and yep. then we'll okay. talk about it at another. Any questions? Any? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. It's all good. All right. So we can go through uh, the town board resolution items while we're waiting for Go Bike Buffalo um, to show up. So tonight we do have um, a continuation, I believe, um, for our special use permit under the public hearing. Um, we're going to have a special use permit at 1551 Harlem Road. We had speakers at the last meeting, and they wanted to keep it open uh, because the, we felt there might be a need for other residents to participate. And I know the town clerk got some um, received some correspondence from people we did. So we'll um, listen if anybody else shows up tonight. Um, the other um, notice of hearing is for demolition at 1746 Dale Road. Rick, do you want to talk about that or? Uh... Oh, good. Do you want to just tell us real quick? Um, real quick, we're running ahead of schedule anyway, so. All right, uh, 1746 Dale Road was uh, catastrophically damaged by fire on the 15th of, of July, 2021, and the property owner has been dragging his feet on doing anything with it, so we're trying to get him to do something with it. Okay. This is the best I got for you right now. I have a full presentation for the board meeting. For the board meeting. Yes. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Craig. And um, we actually were going to do another uh, go. We were going to have go bike Buffalo at the regular meeting, but we switched them over to the work session. So that presentation part we eliminate off the agenda. And then um, we'll go through the resolution items. First one is uh, the warrant. Sorry. Um, Manor Clerk, could you just put them up there? Oh, are we connected or not? The public? Okay. All right. Uh, so the first item is the warrant. Um, resolution 2023-171 is amend um, resolution 2020-269 uh, to eliminate fees for the removal and recycling service e-waste and electronic waste. Um, any, any comments or questions on that? Oh, um, yes. I'd like to see that because when I read that actual law, we couldn't collect the fees any longer. So, yeah. 
Okay. We're just a drop-off point. We're not collecting on behalf of any manufacturer. Correct. So if you, if you were, mm -hmm. if you were, if you were a point where you had a customer that had a request for people to get the I double check because we're registered at mm -hmm. and we're registered to the state of 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 the state Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's reason, interesting. What the I just want to make sure the CDC I look at and go to the garden, not so Well for me is I think this is a good thing for the town not to be collecting fees because a lot of our residents were dumping TVs at the side of the road or in front of somebody else's house and calling and saying, well, it's not mine. Somebody dropped it off here and or being old in Sugar Row. And, and you know, we want to get these off um, people just dumping the TVs and, and any electronics that there's a cost to. We didn't want to pay the fee. So this is going to help clear a town of any of this uh, uh, electronic garbage that there's a fee associated with. So um, that's my point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know then. What are... mm -hmm. Okay. I, I purposely put that in there because that was the way I read the yeah. law. All right. If you could, that would be great. So. Anybody else have anything yeah, else? Yeah, do, do we know where we're physically getting these in or storing them? Yeah, there's a, there's a bin or something or uh, inside the garage, the highway garage. The highway garage. Mm -hmm. Does anybody realize, are we taking uh, CRT too? Yeah. I don't know. That's why I'm asking because those things are basically yeah. hazardous. Yeah. We're ta that's what we're taking. Yes, to, because people were dumping those on the side of the road. So where would you rather it be? Well, in high vega garage in a safe, secure spot? Well, here's, the, here's the, the issue, road. and you can check it with the DEC. Cathode ray tubes have got, on the average, are five to eight pounds of finely powdered lead in them. Mm -hmm. If they break one of those in a highway department, the DEC will shut that building down for months. At what cost? I right. don't know. Well, that's why they handle them, wrap them. They have stacked. So... Um, the, the electronics uh, people who come pick it up. Dan, the point that I'm making, if somebody brings one in and say, whatever, putting it in a container or a trailer or whatever, drops one on the floor and it mm -hmm. breaks. Plus there's other mm -hmm. people working in that building too that I would assume are at risk. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You'd have to check with the highway superintendent and find out what the safety protocol is there. But um, like I said, it could, it, it could be dropped out on the road and that in our yeah well inside soil. a building there's a whole different ball game though. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know who we, we've got to train there mm -hmm. well they're they're not taking it apart they're taking it stack, stacking it yes oh, i wanted to ask john john are we required to store these Yeah, I think Jared said it's going to build in with the floor, walls, and ceiling. 
unless somebody drops it off by the garage door. Good question. I don't know. Well, then they're going to throw it on Indian Road. <laughs> it's going to go into our water system and soil and whatever. I mean, I think this is a safer way to do it. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Um, resolution three is to amend um, resolution 2023-48 for furnishing equipment and operators for air quality monitoring during the emergency control demolition of damaged and or structurally deficient structures on privately owned property in the town of Chichawaga for 2023. So, um, Paul, we, did you submit this or is that Rick Colburn? No, we did. Okay. Oh, I was wondering. Okay, but this is the lowest bidder? Yeah. Okay. So. And the same thing happened then on number four. We award a bid for furnishing equipment and operators for removal of trees from various vacant and unmaintained privately owned properties. So that changed. And five is an award of bid for removal and replacement windows and doors at the Cheektowaga Town Hall. Six is an award of bid for the new ADA compliant three stop hydraulic elevator and related interior renovations. Seven is the award of bid for our work uniforms. Eight is an award of bid for air monitoring for asbestos abatement project in the current chief of the town hall tax office. Nine is the award of bid for controlled demolition with asbestos in place for property located at 23 Tolson. Ten is a call for public hearing, local law intro number 2023-1. It's a local law creating a chapter in the town of uh, to town code titled public nuisance abatement. Oh, um, I think, um, Madam Clerk, did you replace Councilmember Pulaski on all these or not yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did number 10, um, 11 is a special use permit for 465 French Road. 12 is the acceptance by town board of town of Chihuahua supervisory unit memorandum of understanding. 15 is the acceptance by the town board of the Chihuahua Public Safety Dispatchers Association memorandum of understanding. 14 is the creation of a network coordinator for job inventory. 15 is the special event at Xylem Walk for Water. 16 is to authorize highway superintendent for expenditures of highway funds per highway law 284. This is for the um, very detailed and nice, thank you, Mark. so um, proposed highway paving to be able to get a copy. Um, that this was to uh, be able to designate those funds for this highway work. Any questions? Is there? Um, 17 is to authorize uh, the, the supervisor to execute the agreement with O'Donnell and Associates. Any questions? 18 is to approve the cultural group funding for the year 2023 for the Cheektowag Historical Association. 19 is the, to execute the memorandum with the town of Chichawag supervisory unit. Uh, 
this a different one than the other one we mentioned? Two, there was another resolution in here. Two steps here. There you go. Here, it, it was dispatchers and here, number 12. The first one I think was related to dispatchers. This one here is related to, to the sick time one. accrual and in the situation. I thought like it was that. also the one, but okay. Okay. Twenty is uh, authorized supervisor to execute memorandum of understanding with the organizations renting sport court rental um, would be the National Ball Hockey League and the Western New York Roller Hockey League. 21 is the appointment of an outreach worker in the Senior Citizens Department. 22 is an appointment of a welder in the Central Garage. 23 is the uh, hiring and termination of parts and seasonal. 24 is the youth and rec hiring. 25 is youth and rec transfers. No, I'm sorry, terminations. 26 is the travel authorization for the police department. Any questions on anything? Then under the uh, waiver items, once again, we have a lot of waiver items and I ask the department heads, please um, not to submit these unless it's absolutely necessary. Because there are quite a few here. Um, award a bid for the manhole and catch basin uh, frames and covers is one. Two is the award a bid for the town wide tree removal. Three is the award bid for the concrete installation. Four is the award bid for topsoil and hydro speed. Five is the award bid for the equipment and operators for public works projects. And the six is the uh, authorized the supervisor to sign an agreement with Nuss, Bomber, and Clark for the professional services for mechanical and electrical plumbing drawings and specifications for the police department classroom and training center on Scott Place. Seven is um, a resolution to approve the purchase of 65 and 95 gallon refuse and recycle totes. And that are, is all the solution item. Any comments or questions? Dan, how are we doing? Are they on? They're here? Okay, good. So let me put you back on. Great. Thank you, board members, for having us tonight. Um, Bill White Buffalo is here to talk about the work we've been um, doing over the last year related to the Creating Healthy Schools and Communities Grant. Um, I'm going to ask Kim if you pull up the slide deck that we sent to you this morning, I believe. And then I will turn it over to her here shortly. All right, this is um, Cindy Wood, uh, Bill Bike Close, Hi, project Cindy. manager for um, the analysis that we're undertaking right now. She's going to give you an update on what has been accomplished so far within the last six, eight months, and then uh, the steps forward uh, for this upcoming spring. Hi, thanks for having me today. Um, so I'm going to go to the next slide, but I'll give a little bit more of an overview of what this project accomplished. So um, our goal is to have a community vetted um, design for um, the the a fulfilled project that will um, that will improve connectivity to Town Park um, for people who are traveling by foot or by bike, um, and improving safe access at that, um, and really making efforts to connect the community in more ways than just 
So, um, so a lot of our work really is grassroots. It's purely community driven. It's community led. Uh, we do surveying for everything that we do, um, and designs are curated based on sur the feedback that we receive from the survey. Um, and also. A big component is youth involvement, so we want to be able to have kids be able to participate in these types of um, projects and have, you know, art inclusivity and everything like that. So if you can go on to the next one. So heading back to almost about a year ago, uh, we hosted uh, a Complete Streets workshop with um, probably about 11 or 12 from folks um, that are community leaders within Chippewaga. Um, we had them join us at the Alexander Community Center. Um, we had uh, gone over exactly what complete streets are um, and the importance of it, especially for um, a policy within the town of Chippewaga, which um, I know this can discuss. So um, we went over that. We took a little bit of a walk around uh, down Australia Ave up Ridge Park and through the park and kind of identified some problematic uh, challenges that have been experienced. So um, Straley, even when we were walking down that street, people were flying down that street. Um, and, you know, we saw it for ourselves. We got to talk to a neighbor who lives directly at Ridge Park in Straley and um, got a lot of really great feedback from him on that. Um, so we were able to pinpoint some intersections that really could use some work um, and improvement on safe access. And then we went back to the community center and had everybody who participated be able to mark on a, count, uh, on a map, like an 11 to 17 um, map, and really be able to give that feedback right directly on that. Um, so that was very insightful. Um, of course, we're coming into this not knowing a lot about the town of Chicktawaga. We want to be able to um, kind of take a step back and let you know those who do live here and experience this from day to day, you know, take that, take that uh, approach and give us that expert feedback. That of course we are, we're not here to assume, you know, for the reasons. Can you go on to the next one? So this past fall, we did two studies. Um, we had that count uh, bicyclists and pedestrians, uh, that activity along a stretch street. We put up that equipment over on Straley, kind of near the ridge intersection. Um, we saw that the majority of those who were traveling down were pedestrians, um, almost <coughs> three quarters of such. Um, and so that really does account for um, pedestrian activity that we, uh, we anticipated seeing in the area, which, which is great. Um, if you want to go on to the next one. We also did a speed study. We actually did it during a week where it was very, very rainy. <laughs> so um, surprisingly, we had a lot of people still walking and biking. Um, but we think that vehicle speeds were a little bit lower due to these. but. Um, especially from what we saw on our site visit, we did see obviously a lot of speeders, so um, that may have been a factor which reduced that, but can you go on to the next one? So uh, like I said before, we did launch a survey. We had the survey live for about two months. Um, we had it available for <coughs> feedback uh, for residents around Tom Park. We had a targeted ad that um, was posted on Facebook, and it, the targeted ad um, captured or distributed it to people who within two kilometers of the park itself. Um, you know, those who are able to walk to to the park in their homes, and you know, that feedback. We had a survey station um, posted up in the library within Town Park um, for all of those two months. Um, we also had um, our community engagement manager, he tabled uh, at both the library and the ice skating rink, had a lot of really great conversation. We ended up having over 60 survey responses um, and lots of impressions and uh, views from that uh, targeted ad for the, uh, for the survey. You can go on to the next one. So the main things that we took away from the survey feedback was that um, 
people were feeling like they had a lot, there was a lack of safe, safe access to get to the park uh, from their neighborhoods, whether it was in within the neighborhood that is, you know, directly connected to, or if they were crossing Harlem, or if they were crossing Genesee. Um, a lot of that feedback really was derived from that. Um, the uh, lack of crosswalks, there weren't a lot of crosswalks, safe crosswalks that they felt were available. Um, that was both within the park and within um, the connection to the park itself. Um, obviously flowing traffic, that is um, and then lots of general streetscape improvements. So um, not a lot of benches, not a lot of trash cans um, and such. So move on to the next one. So on the left, that is what the intersection looks like as of now. And what we would like to do, um, which is the proposed design on the right hand side is what we want to allocate some of the space that's directly around the intersection and reclaim that for safer pedestrian access to be able to cross the street. So instead of having, you know, 28 feet that, um, you know, parents and kids really have to cross the street, all they have to do is cross 20 feet instead of 20, 28. It really does make a big difference in that regard. But by taking that space and, you know, creating public art with kids, that is an incredibly huge way to, you know, have that involvement within, within the community, um, especially with the Boys and Girls Club being very close by. going to, to mention that everything was done with paint and with temporary bollards. Um, so you can kind of see, you can see, see two examples here. One is on the left hand side, that's one that um, I led up in Niagara Falls. Um, it's at the corner of the Main Street, Monteagle Street and Chisholm Avenue. Um, and the same road, it's pretty much where all four streets uh, meet. But uh, here, each, Travel lane was about 21 feet wide, and the wider the travel lane, the faster cars can go. So by gradually narrowing that up to the intersection, it forces cars to slow down and be more aware traveling through the intersection, but also incorporating that public art by somebody who is from that neighborhood um, was extremely important and uh, representative of the community. Um, and then for the BMC, they were the ones, BNMC were the ones that took charge of this project, but um, same concept, uh, shortening that distance for people to have to cross and be in that conflict zone where cars are interacting uh, with pedestrians and um, adding art into it, beautifying it. And you can see this really being um, a thing to have kids, you know, have that art included in those fun rides with the the there were also a lot of there were a lot of comments about crosswalks as well, and there are ways to incorporate art within crosswalks, and we've done that also up in Niagara Falls for one of our projects. Um, like I said, this map is a little bit dated, but there are four um, four crosswalks that connect to um, like the bridge up in the northern corner. Um, that was recently restored, I believe, right? Um, so that crosswalk is faded. Um, most of these are faded. The ones that are near the ice rink, um, that also, the, those are great candidates, but then there's one intersection that don't have any crosswalks at all, so that would be also another candidate. But if you go to the next slide, you can see some examples of what it would look like for art within crosswalks. Um, so really it's, it's kids, you know, taking charge and giving them a design and giving them the ability to participate. And um, it's, it's fun. Kids love to do that kind of stuff. So, um, next slide. So, any questions? Yes, Council Member Noah. Thank you. Uh, starting with the survey responses, mm -hmm. you said that they were targeted within two kilometers, right? Yes. 
And you mentioned over 60 responses. Is that total from tabling and written and social media, or was that just one format? That was everything, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, we just, that's it. We dealt with that. Okay, so as, as far as like the, the bump outs and like painting the road and all that, mm -hmm. is, is, is that one of those things that it's temporary in the course of 12 months or what are we talking about in terms of a timetable? So with tem the temporary installation, the paint typically lasts between one and two years. So it is primarily, when we, when we say temporary, it's a way for us to gather that data to show um, you know, driver behavior change, right? And show that um, this project before, you saw how it was and the results of the data collection and you post, we'll be able to put up that equipment, get counts again and see, is there more pedestrian activity than there was before? Is there, um, it, are cars slowing down as well? Like such, that kind of thing. So it's essentially to justify any type of project like this that can, you know, help. In, in different areas too, so. And the last question I had was about. What the engineering team like over the last couple years to uh, bring about the project to the to the <laughs> Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. So we would um, our and our in-house engineer and our team would be able to create basically a blank canvas and paint that all down um, and then have kids come in after everything, after really the shape of everything is, is put more set in stone. Yeah, the last question I had was about data. Thank you. Uh, I, a lot of the folks we have in our community and all, different, all the different neighborhoods, the drivers. Mm -hmm. We do have people that rely on public transit or the walking and biking and all that, of course. But there's a lot of drivers. so. Is there data that can be sent to the town board with previous changes to roads to show how this reduces speeds? Because to my mind, changing the engineering of a road, you can reduce speed doing those things. Absolutely. But then you have to make the investment up front and all that stuff. But you have to decide finding the money for something like that. It's like you need to prove that it actually works. Exactly. And a lot of our motorists, uh, if they see a road diet or they see these things being done, to their mind, it might be you're slowing down my commute, take longer to get to work now to do this to do that. So, mm -hmm. just having that data would help us really consider the trade-off. Absolutely. And one other thing that I would like to do before um, before we actually get this implementation up and rolling is I would like to have the uh, speed study done one more time beforehand, so we can possibly get a little bit more accurate speed data, um, and that way the before and after will be more uh, accurate. Here's a question. I don't even know if you would know this, but is there, um, has, has anyone ever looked at having a steep crossing area on Harlem? Because to get kids from the other side to come to the park or they want to swing or whatever, um, I mean, really, there's two lights there, but I think we need something that's yeah. a little more helpful for traffic signal. Yeah, I've seen um, up in Kenmore, and I've also seen, um, I know they're planning to do one up in Niagara Falls too. It's um, basically, a, it's a beacon. So yeah, so like a, not directly at an intersection, but near, like kind of between two intersections. That is, that is a possibility. Um, I've seen that. For clarification, are you talking about what they've done on Sheridan Drive in Tonawanda? Yes. Okay. Yep. Where, yeah, it's where the Tonawana rail trails are, yep. Uh, Council Member Jasinski. Yeah, I like the idea of having a bottleneck. One suggestion I'd probably make is have, when it bottlenecks, maybe have some high-vis colors that'll be more, you know, be able to be seen and known that that area is, you know, for the safety of pedestrians. Mm -hmm, absolutely. As I saw in the draft, there was nothing like a, a high-vis colors. I would suggest to put some high-vis colors in that. So the, the page that was in that photo was just designating that that is the space where that will be, but um, we're going to be setting up a meeting with the Boys and Girls Club since it's directly right there. Um, and we'll coordinate some efforts for picking out the colors and, you know, having all of that. And mm -hmm. and we also have uh, temporary, like, bollard delineators that will be in, uh, a, a, exactly they have the reflective material on it. So um, it will, it will 
it won't it won't be not impossible to see at night of course like obviously it's mm -hmm. yep 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 anyone else okay well thank you so mm -hmm. much for thank being and giving us this update we really appreciate everything you're doing appreciate it thank you that's it dan did you want to add anything or no um well, I have one uh, final point to all this. Uh, the, the study size that we're looking at right now is really about setting the stage going forward of how we shape our policy um, within the community of Chicktawaga and what road conditions look like um, going forward as we begin to redesign roads that um, are transitional from rural areas on the eastern end of the county to the more um, urban street setting that you find on the western end of the, the town. Um, so it, it, it's, it, it's basically um, priming for that next step to how do we reshape what we're working with right now mm -hmm. to create a safer environment for the community and the public um, beyond just the, the, uh, you know, the, the automobile user. Um, and in addition to, I did want to point out, a lot of times when you do bring in um, different measures that reduce speed, um, you have uh, safer vehicle travel as well in addition to um, less accidents with pedestrians and cyclists. So. Right, like on Niagara Street in the city of Buffalo, they have a, a lane just specifically for pedestrians and yeah. bikers, and there's a, a median that separates them from the main flow of traffic. Right, right. And, and th that's a very... Um, you know, intense design change, which, you know, I think is achievable in parts of the community, um, but it's not gonna be a, a blanket all, fits all um, approach. I mean, there's gonna be some tailoring and more conversations that have to go forward as this dialogue grows. So, um, thank you for your time today, appreciate it. Okay, thank you, good idea. Okay, um, at this point, my agenda. Um, I'd like to make an motion to go into executive session uh, to discuss uh, matters leading or, or matters regarding the employment history of particular persons and TCEA negotiations. Do I have a second? Council Member Adams Act. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, we will come back at seven o'clock for the viewers who are on YouTube uh, for